guys, welcome back to The Road to Valhalla. Um, this is episode three, I think. Uh, a Smith by any other name. Today I'm going to be talking about Wayland the Smith and the importance of Smiths throughout culture and history. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll just get right into it. Uh, Wayland the Smith is the Old Norse um, mythological figure of like the master blacksmith. Uh, he's also, Wayland is his old English name. He's known as Wolinter and Wolander and Wielant and lots of other names in High German and Old Norse and Proto-Germanic languages and things like that. Um, so he's pretty popular. He shows up in a lot of cultures. Um, one, before I get into his story, I want to talk a little bit about mythological smiths and about more primitive cultures. It's kind of hard for us today to imagine that one person in a small town could be the most important or could be totally necessary to a town's survival. Um, but the smith in Greece, Rome, uh, Nordic tribes, um, Anglo-Saxons, you're gonna, you're gonna see that they're pretty important, um, in a small town or, like, a village, I guess, a village, whatever. I'm not, I know I'm not using, like, historically accurate terms, I'm just trying to give you, like, a general idea. Um, I want you to imagine what it would be like if you had to make the nails for your house. If you had to make just the basic tools for eating. If, if you had to make your own fork and spoon. Some of the most basic and important things in architecture and daily life are made of metal. Screws, nails, um, eating utensils like I've already said, um, small knives just for using things, doorknobs, hinges to make doors open and close. Like you don't even really think about it because those are all mass-produced pro like items for us. Um, but a smith would have made them by hand, one at a time, well maybe not one at a time, they could probably pound out a couple nails at a time, but I mean, can you imagine how hard it would be to exist if your town didn't have a blacksmith? So I just wanted, like, everyone to understand how important, like, the smith is to, um, to some older societies. Uh, I don't think there's really an equivalent today, like, if you live in a small town, who would the most important person be? I mean, you could argue, like, the mailman, or I guess the postmaster of the post office, or maybe the mayor, but even then... I don't think so. Your survival, or like your shelter and your food doesn't really depend on those people. Um, and they show up, Smiths show up in pretty much every culture. Pretty much every culture that has a mythology has a Smith sort of figure. Um, Hephaestus, uh, or Vulcan, I guess, um, the uh, god of heat and fire and the Smith and yeah. You've pro you're probably most familiar with him, but you've also got Tubal Cain. I don't know if I'm saying that right, because it's the Bible, and I'm not really all that familiar with the Bible. But um, he shows up in the book of Genesis as, like, the original Smith, I think, if, if I'm getting that right. Um, there's one in Finnish mythology whose name I cannot pronounce. It's like, my notes say it's like Seppo... Ilmarinian? I don't know. Um, you've got it in the Celtic. Oh, Gofanon in um, Celtic mythologies. And you've got uh, Vishrakarma in the Hindu uh, Rig Veda. So, it's not like Wayland is really particularly special, but because I'm sort of focusing on Anglo-Saxon and, and Viking cultures, I'm going to be talking about him. The myth goes that Wayland had two brothers, and that the three of them lived with three Valkyries who were apparently their lovers or their wives or something, um, and that at some point, the, or they lived in Valhalla, which is pretty awesome. I think they lived in Valhalla. No, I don't think that's right. I think I'm making that up. But, um... The Valkyries, if you don't know who they are, are these, like, super hot, badass chicks who hang out over battles, and they decide who lives and dies. 
So that's pretty cool. So Wayland and his brother, Egil and Slagfdir, Fthir? Slagfthir? I don't know, are living with these women, and um, eventually they leave, and Wayland's Valkyrie lady leaves him a ring. Um, in another version, he actually marries a swan maiden, not a Valkyrie, and they have a son together. But in both versions, there is a ring, okay, a ring that's left by this woman, and um, it's pretty important to him. Later on in his life, he gets captured by um, King Nithod? Nithoth? I don't know. He gets captured by kind of a jackass king, and um, the king cuts the hamstrings on the back of his legs to keep him from escaping, which is pretty horrible, uh, and he imprisons Wayland on, um, Sarvstoth? Stoth? Sarvstoth? I'm not very good at pronouncing these words, I'm sorry. Just roll with me. He imprisons him on an island. I think it's an island. Um, and the king takes Wayland's ring, and he gives it to his daughter, which is a, a jerk move, and, um, Wayland is forced to work as a smith for the king living in, like, I think he lives in, like, a dungeon or something like that. Um, sorry, I'm trying to read my notes. My bad. I'm not that prepared for this video. Oh, okay. He, um... The king also takes from Wayland his sword. Wayland's sword, not the king's sword. The king takes Wayland's sword and wears it as his own. Um... And that's kind of rude. Waylon ends up killing the king's three sons. I think there are three of them. When they come to visit him in secret in the dungeon, and he makes uh, he makes like special presents. I guess you could call them for the king and his wife and his daughter. Uh, he turned their skulls into goblets, which I think went to the king. Um, their eyes into jewels which I think went to the queen, and their teeth into a brooch, which goes to um, the daughter. And I'm not sure if it occurs to the king and his royal family that these are made out of um, the prince's body parts. But, yeah. So he does that, and that's kind of cool. Um, I don't know where the rest of my notes went. But... In the end, um, Wayland ends up raping uh, the princess, the daughter, and leaves her impregnated. And then he, I think, builds himself some wings and flies out of the island. It's kind of a cool story, I thought. Um, I'm sure that I'm paraphrasing, but he... Oh, hi, Alex. Sorry, I'm ADD. Um, anyway... Where was I? Flies out of the island. Okay. Uh, he shows up in the prose Eda later on, and he um, his story is recorded on a famous runestone in Scandinavia, I think. I'm not sure if it's in Scandinavia or if it's in um, Britain. I can't even remember the name of the stone. I did this research like weeks ago, so I've almost completely forgotten. But I thought that you guys would find that pretty interesting, just so you get an idea. I mean, the man is a total badass. He gets his hamstrings cut, he kills the king's sons, turns them into fancy presents, and then rapes his daughter, or the king's daughter, not his own, and um, flies off of the island, the end, which would have been a much better ending to Lost than, than the actual one that the writers wrote. But, yeah, so... I think that's all I have to say for today. When I come back, I'm going to talk about the importance of swords and their relationships to the wearer. So thank you for watching.